and welcome to Rolling With Two. I'm Will, and with me as always is the narrative ne'er-do-well herself. <laughs> Sarah. And today we're doing a two-player perspective and accessibility for Destinies. If you want to check out our reviews of what we think, check out Rolling With Reviews, Destinies. Sarah, tell us a bit about this game. All right. Destinies is a competitive, story-driven, app-supported, RPG-like board game experience. Each scenario depicts a part of a vivid world full of dark stories, epic NPCs, and mysteries to solve. Each player takes the role of a hero on a quest to fulfill their destiny. Each destiny is the final goal of the character and has at least two completely different paths to victory, composed of branching series of quests. Players compete with each other to push the world towards their own destiny. All right, Will, so how does the game change for two players? Well, it's actually built for two players or three, three players. players. Yes. Those are the only player counts. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. there there are ways to play at higher player counts, but the base focus is on two to three players. Right. Uh, so no changes for a two player. Correct. There's and no there much. is no bot. However, the app does handle a lot of stuff, so it might feel like a bot sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. So issues at a two player game, we couldn't find any because the experience is really well ta tailored towards the lower player count. Um, so what it does well is the app, well, handles so much that the experience is, it's just easier on lower player counts. Yeah, a big problem that a lot of narrative games have is they require you to reference a lot of material mm -hmm. outside of the game. And anytime you do that, well, you're doing some busy work, which means you're no longer engaged in the narration yeah. of the world or the story. So therefore it feels very stop, start, jittery. This doesn't because when you pull up the app, not only is it giving you straight the story that you need without having to look anything extra up, it's also giving you background mm -hmm. ambient sounds right. and putting and it, you more into the environment. And it tells you all of your choices every single time it's your turn. So you're not having to look at like this table or that table or looking at all the options and accidentally seeing the result of those options because that's yeah. happened a few times. And the other thing is with two or just fewer players, if you've got to put a lot of things out, that also can be a big strain. If you've only got a few players, one person's got the book, another person's got components. But if you have, you know, more players, then you can spread out the workload. Yeah, so or pass speak. the book around right. or things like that. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, since it's made to be two or three players, at two players, you're only using two of the three characters that are provided for every scenario. So if you want to replay a scenario, you can not only switch to a different character, you could potentially well, play a character that has not been played before. Yeah, so you get completely new story mm -hmm. from that character since, like Sarah said, uh, they were taking out of your first playthrough right. and gives you more options. It's a very interesting way they balance the whole thing. From the way I understand it is because you have two paths, a white path and a purple path for every story, the white path might mix with someone else's purple and mm -hmm. their white might mix out with someone else's purple and the other purple will mix with someone's white. Right. So you have always this triangle. So no matter if you're playing two or three players, you're always going to have that little bit of butting heads. Yeah, that little bit of competition of, oh, I was trying to get that thing, but you got it. So now I have to go try the other path. Yes. But the other path will be open because then there's nobody else going that way. Yes, but that's how they can actually give you still competition, mm -hmm. still interaction, and still interesting, even though one of the characters isn't there, which just means you can still pop it in and still have the same type of experience. Right. right. Well, that's it for the two player experience. So moving on to accessibility. One, you're gonna need a device that can run the app. Now, I don't know anything about really technology. I just know that this iPad, I opened up the app store and it's available and it works. So yeah, you're going to have to check on the app to see yeah. if, well, your device can run it. Right. So the good news is it's a free app. So before you buy the game, any version, we have the full complete copy here. Um, open it up on, uh, on your phone or your device or whatever. Make sure you can download it and run it first before going and buying the game. Yes. It's one of the few times that we say that actually mon money is in a barrier because it requires you to actually have 
a device completely outside of the game. Right, because assuming you've got the money to buy the game, usually you don't have to invest any more money into it. But I spent all my money on the game. <laughs> So yeah, that's gonna be a challenge. The other one still about the app is it's a lot of reading. Yeah, you know, when you open up each scenario, there is voice spoken for the intro and it's really well done, really nice. And from then on out, it's all text. Yeah, you'll have to read it. So that can be a lot for some people. So hopefully you can, uh, well, the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to hand the device around so everybody uses it on their turn. Unfortunately for us, because of Will's vision, I have to do it for both of us. Um, so it really depends on who you've got at the table as to whether it might be a bit more work for one person than another. Yeah. Um, the color palette of the map cards, um, I actually had some issues where I forgot to flip some, some of them over or I put them the wrong way. So the back side is kind of a sepia tone with some clouds on it uh, to kind of cover things up. But then the other side is just drab colors. So it's not all that much better. A lot. That's what I would call grayscale kind of. Yeah, you flipped them over and you're like, oh, wait, that's the back side. Okay, flip them back over. <laughs> it, it, fortunately, because the app handles all the story elements, she didn't ruin anything for herself right? Uh, by having the map tiles the wrong way. It's just one little niggling thing that's like, oh, yeah. well, I mean, so you can see a few buildings. You don't know what's on it until you move on to it. So it's, it's not a huge issue because you're not pre-setting up everything on the board. That is, again, one of the nice things about the app is when you move, then it says flip that tile over, populate it, and then add additional uh, map tiles. Uh, cards around it but only just around it yeah and considering they actually reuse map tiles from mm -hmm. scenario to scenario that building might be a bakery in one <laughs> yeah. story or a tinkerer's cottage in another right so yeah you, it's it's still hidden information yes the miniatures are unpainted and if you're like us we're never going to paint them but even if you paint them i'm still not sure it's going to help with this issue of the fact that the Tiny ones are really, really, really tiny. Um, I put it next to a quarter and it is smaller than a quarter. And so when you've got a large map area and you've got a lot of different figures, you've got players and NPCs, let's just say there was one scenario I was moving the blacksmith around instead of my figure because I couldn't see the difference from afar. <laughs> Yeah. So, get yeah. your hands off that blacksmith. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, I don't know if painting would help because again, they're so small, the detail. Unless you used a lot of different colors, maybe that would help. Like if you did the player colors, maybe in something more. Well, then again, you can't say that all the same characters are going to be just for the characters. Yes, because one player character in one game might actually be a an NPC, NPC in a that, different scenario. Right, so that even that doesn't help. Yeah. Um, then the last thing for vision accessibility is the fate cards are kept secret. So if you have severe vision issues like Will, the font is really the main problem. Yeah, it has a lot of curlies in there. Um, it takes me a while to read. Uh, so when it's time to play, each person gets a fate card. Uh, then they go and they read the top section to see what their overall motivation is. Below that is the white section and a purple section. Those are the two ways you can actually fulfill your destiny. And then the bottom, it just says, when you're done, go here to finish the story. Right. So it's really that top section that I really, really have a problem with. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the white and purple sections are usually smaller or not as much text. So right. it's not as bad. But you need to read the top to understand the, your character's motivation. Right. Your motivation for doing the things you're going to do. Yeah. So that is unfortunate that those were not made more visually accessible. I mean, even for me, I find the text a little hard to read. It's it's just not the greatest. And it's I'm, medieval -y. Yeah. Again, choosing the aesthetics over the usability is, is a, well, I say it's a tough choice. I don't think it's a tough choice. You should probably always go with usability when it's an important key part of playing the game. Yes. All right. It's like, hey, yeah, try this car. I got rid of the wheel that steers. 
how do you steer it? Uh, just by good intentions, I guess. <laughs> On that note, what it does right, it has dual layer player boards. So that means Will can manipulate his own board without me helping. Yes, no touchy. No touchy. <laughs> yeah, and they, they fit nicely in uh, the piece, but they don't get stuck. So uh, you can move them, easily move them around. Right. To figure out where your stats are. Right. And also you have two different dice that are for two different purposes. And they're different sizes, so that makes it really easy for Will to know instead of just, oh, well, you'll use the red dice for this and the blue dice for that. Yeah, the two larger dice that each player has are the dice that you're always going to roll whenever mm -hmm. anything needs to know whether how many successes. And then your smaller dice are your effort dice. Yes. And that has its own mechanic, and it's just easy to feel and go, yep, this is my one I roll. I want to roll these. I'm done. Yep. Um, the rules are relatively simple to learn. Um, it, it, yeah, it's just a straightforward game. Yeah, so <laughs> let, let, let's explain how the game plays. You have a character out on the map. You can choose to move. You don't have to. Wherever you end up, you can do a thing. And the app tells you what the things are. That's it. Yeah. The app guides you along so well. And I mean, in the rules, you, you need to know how to resolve uh, you know checks and yeah. things like but but all the checks work relatively the same it's just uh using one of the three different stats and you know having successes or failing that type of thing yeah um the, also along the same lines of it being simple there's not that many different icons so they're really easy and distinct to tell apart because there's not that many different components in the game right and uh, lastly, if you do end up with this deluxe storage box, one of the great things is it comes with stickers for all the bottoms of all the figures. Which will take a time because it's 77 of them. Yeah. And um, the trays are numbered and there are guides in the book that comes with this um, that shows you which figure goes with which one. So it guides you through stickering. Yeah. And once everything's in place, you can even look down at the tray and you'll see actual lines around certain sections. So you know that, oh, this is the base figures. This is mm -hmm. the uh, figures for this expansion right. and this expansion. Right. And the nice thing is, is the app now also references the number. So you, whenever you you need to find a figure, it will show it. Um, but because, again, they're small, you might not be able to tell the difference between one old man and another old man. But now you have the actual number. So um, if you like the game, you would. this is a good idea to get the big deluxe collector. It's not a collector's box because it's um, just the storage, storage solution. Yes. You still have to buy the expansion separately. Yeah, the nice thing is with the storage solution, unlike other big box this does actually reduce the mm -hmm. amount of space yeah because uh, i've seen many storage solutions like oh well that's the same amount of space but it's one box yeah great no this actually does take up less space than the base game and all the expansion boxes yes so that's really nice okay that's everything so conclusion for two players i think so because it was designed for two or three players which means the lower player counts is going to be where it's at. I mean, I I know it has a way to play at higher player counts. I don't know what you do to make it different. Yeah, it, but it, it's pretty much built for it. So yeah, I think yes. you play teams. I just have this feeling that you play teams, but I don't quite remember it. Uh, anyway, there was a bound by fate. Yes, thing that might expand. But we that's actually the one thing we don't have. Right. We, that's the one expansion. Because it's more of a versus type yeah. thing rather than well, collectively is, trying. Well, no, well Yeah, it's still competitive. This is still competitive. Um, I do think, though, that it formed teams of right. players. So it was versus versus type of things, which still gives you that two to three player experience. Yes, the triangle of Right. Goals. But it's just you have two people on each team. All right. Accessibility. Um. This is, again, going to be mostly yes, because the critical part is you need a device and need to be able and willing to do a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. 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 It, the, devi it, the device was actually one of the things that kept us away from this game for as right. long as we had. Uh, if it wasn't for our friends to keep saying, like, you need to try it, you need to try it, you need to do it. <laughs> yes. Fine. We got it in a math trade and 
Yeah. yeah. We, we got suckered in because we didn't want a game that was... We were playing a video game that just happened to have physical components. Right. But this right. is not. This is yeah. this is good accessibility. It's just lots of reading. Right. But it's okay because it's a narrative experience. Right. So Which is what, you, what you're expecting when you get this kind of game. Yes. All right, then. All right. And Sarah. Yes. Would you ever design a story for the destiny i don't know i i would definitely we definitely need to get through all the expansions because i want to see what they do the base game is on the simpler more straightforward side but that's okay because that's you know supposed to introduce mm -hmm. you we haven't finished it yet so i need to see what the expansions do to see if anything sparks your interest. sparks my interest yeah interesting mm -hmm. and why would you ever roll with just one when you can be rolling, rolling with, with two, two. And remember, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to us on the various social media platforms at... Rolling with Two, that's T-W-O. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And if you have time, check out the other content Nanaman has found for you. Because remember, he's rolling with you.